Hello, it's Kimberly Keller, and if you are watching today, this is the third live video I'm going to do. This is kind of geared towards the junior high, high school age, and um, adults are welcome, always welcome, and if you're younger, you're just doing it with me. So this is exciting, and I am chartering new territory, trying to figure things out. I just met with my landlord, Jerry, who is so kind and so wonderful. And uh, he has told me that he's going to hang with me during this situation. So um, if you are a landlord and you can hang out with uh, your renters, it's pretty exciting news. So uh, I'm at a, I think I'm going to make a half price uh, attempt for him. I'm going to try to get him half of what he needs. There is a tip jar, and uh, maybe some of you that are still employed. Is that a word anymore? I don't know. I'll have to think about that. And uh, and you'd like to thank me for giving you some supplies, because I'll give them to you if you need them. You just let me know. Or if you need, or if you're thankful for this little bit of time, um that we can draw together, put it in the tip jar for heaven's sakes. That's all there is to it. I am going to try to be doing some paintings and sell them so I can reach my goal for him because he's letting me hang out here and um, he's doing his part. I want to do my part. So let's see if we can't do our parts together. So this is exciting. Let's um, start. Start art. I mean, the word art is in start. So let's start short art. I am going to talk to you about drawing from life. There are lots of words that sound that similar. Draw from life means suck it in, bring it in, tell me about it. But for us today, draw from art means that from life, we're going to draw from life. So things that you see. It could be a plug-in, it could be your shoe, it could be your dog or your cat. I happen to have um, several cats, I have six, that crazy cat lady, and I have one dog, he's adorable, and I have a grand dog, and I have a grand cat, and soon a grand baby, April 5th is when she's supposed to come, or he, I don't know, boy or girl, doesn't matter. I have decided that it's a boy. Mr. Keller says it is a girl, so we shall see. Because we are playing old school, no, we don't know. I have gathered up my pencils. If you are brand new and haven't had art with me before, I get a set of pencils. Um, they have 12 shades. What that basically means is they have different numbers on them. You know the number two pencil that you have to use when you use uh, math I'm not saying you can't use that because that's a 2b 2b the numbers are right here 2b and a 2b pencil just to warm up with your 2b write the number 2b and then write your name you can print you can do whatever and give yourself one of these little things over to the side and of feel how it goes now I'm holding my pencil like it is a math project but this is another way to hold your pencil okay like this i lay it inside my hand can you see that lay it inside your hand put it inside here and your thumb is holding it your finger is holding it it's kind of like a pointer and you can lay it on its side and make a little texture right underneath there that's a two now if you have a whole bunch of pencils because you have an art fetish like me you love art and you look this one is a 8b that's probably the darkest one I have short of an ebony and the bigger the number the softer the lead the bigger the number the softer the lead which means it is darker you use it faster and it breaks if you put too much pressure so it depends. Hold it this way. Lay it down. See how dark you can get it. Look at that. 
Okay, if you have several different pencils and you're not sure what they are, this is a great way. Oh, good heavens, it tried to hide on me. So write Keller or your name, whatever it is you want to be called today. Now, the, there are other pencils that have like HB or F or 2H and those right skinnier they more or less scratch the paper cut the paper a little different you can get them light like this you use different pencils the same way you use different paint brushes so different pencils for different paint brushes what if all you have today is a number two pencil if you all you have today is a number two pencil you can still draw you can still draw pretty good actually remember drawing is just taking shapes and numbers and things that you already know and putting them together and bringing them um, out now I put a few notes for myself over here to the side because I don't have anybody to give me those prompts to remind me what to say like Miss Beth would do sometimes when she's in the she'll say oh and be sure and say or she'll ask me a question and then I'll answer it I don't have her here I do have the little comment button down at the bottom uh, Mr. Jerry told me there is something called zoom and he told me we can do interactive so I'm gonna have to learn how to do that I'm on a learning curve just like the rest of the planet and we can do this now when you if you've got a sketchbook put your spiral part away from your wrist okay because if you've got it this way look you've got to rest it on here and it is not fun it is hurtful so don't do it okay so what if it's upside down if you're a lefty if you're a righty it doesn't matter just put that over there nobody's going to know you don't sign it that way um let's talk about drawing uh, let's say that you draw an animal. Let's say that you decide to draw your dog, your dog or your cat, and they're asleep. Or you draw the deer in the backyard or the front yard. And you're drawing those, and they get up and move. You can follow them, possibly. You can look up uh, something like that on your internet. So it's not the same that you don't have that reference, that point of reference. If you have ever seen... Norman Rockwell, he's the guy that drew from life experiences. I'll go dig up his stuff here in a few minutes and bring it back if we have time at the end. And um, But he would put all of his stuff around him that would inspire him, that would get him going in it. He would have a picture of a helmet if he was drawing a helmet on someone playing football or he would have his baseball glove out to the side of him so that he's drawing that he sees that as his piece so if you have a cat or a dog or something like that if you don't have a cat or a dog uh, draw a pretend cat or dog i'm going to draw a, a cat here for just a minute and i'm going to turn it this way now hope you can still see can y'all still see i think y'all can um moved in the light switches today i didn't have um, those fancy things so i just had to kind of make up my own i had these in the back room i dug them out and i brought them up in the front so i could have some light really to get on the piece of paper and um, i'd look healthier because i'm healthy and that's what we want to do is we want to stay healthy this is cramping everyone's style we're going to get through it all right so here we go so i'm going to just kind of round out my cat I've got his hip he's laying down in my mind and he's got a tail curled up around and maybe it's a little bit longer maybe that tails a little bit longer and it curves up around the back of him now I can draw cats from memory because I have so many um, which one am I drawing? Probably blue. He's kind of a gray color. And he's a Russian blue or something like it. He has this aardvark looking nose. It's kind of hilarious, to be honest with you. 
This is, he kind of looks like a little pig. You know, that's another thing. If you're drawing and whatever you're drawing doesn't turn out to look like something that you meant it to look like, change it. Okay, if yours looks like, <laughs> right now mine looks like something that's not a cat, um, then don't make it be a cat. Let it be something else. One time, and I've told this story before in the classroom when we were here, I had a, what I thought was going to be a lion turned out to be a grasshopper. Okay, it's a grasshopper. And so what? It's a grasshopper. So this is Blue. Blue, like, he's a really long cat. And he sleeps like this. Okay, so I've got him and his long tail. I may have to make his tail longer, I'm not sure. If you have an eraser and you want to erase, use your eraser. If you don't have an eraser, don't use it. Um, many artists don't use erasers. They don't. They just draw in behind it. See, that's going to just become a pillow right there. Or maybe that piece right there is going to become something else. He's laying in the corner of the sofa. He could be laying in the corner of the room. He could be laying on the corner of the porch. Once you have your outline-ish, then you're going to kind of work on your details. I think that's a little more cat looking. Here's where his little sweet nose is. Here's his little eyes. You see him? So I'm using my um, sketching tool. There is something called hatching and cross hatching. This is hatching when you take your line and you go like this. You're kind of shading it in a little bit. And then there is some cross hatching. And cross hatching. So I'm using some of my hair technique here too. If you have a different pencil, I would probably get a darker pencil. I would get a, a six or a five. And I'm going to go ahead and come in a little darker. This is a four. And I can make the shadow underneath him. What you try to do when you're drawing is you try to get rid of your lines. We're trying to not have that idea that it is a coloring book. We're trying to shade and blend and move away from that. Here he is on this couch. I'm going to put him darker back up in here because this part of the couch is darker. Now watch what happens to that line that you thought, maybe somebody else thought I messed up. Look, it's gone because I got rid of it by making it darker. This is hatching and cross hatching. Hatching when you go this way, cross hatching when you go this way. This is sketching. We're doing a little sketching. This is with a different pencil. You see how it's getting wider? Look at that. You see it flatten out, come back in, flatten out, come back in. And I'm just moving it up and down. I can turn it over, and by turning it over, it gets a little pointier. Use this knowledge at to your advantage kind of think what does that need there you have to kind of be the doctor to it doctor it up for lack of a better word now i'm still using that four but if i put the four down i go back to my two and this is that math pencil so maybe you all have one of these if you need some supplies friends you please text me and I will bring some plies and put them on my back porch here at the studio. Or if you're out in uh, the Wahlberg area, I'll 
drop them off somewhere and I'll help you out we're all in this together we're gonna we're gonna get through this so I'm kind of given my couch do you notice that I'm dealing with my negative space negative space is important to deal with you've got to deal with that negative space Negative space is the space around it. Remember when I paint with you and I tell you, deal with that background, deal with that background, deal with that background? I think I say deal with that background. Well, this is exactly the same thing. You've got to deal with this. Decide what to do with that background first. Now, I'm almost set here for the, the um, cat's background, but now I want to deal with my shadow underneath. So look how I'm getting rid of that chin line there just by putting in some shadow. I'm going to put in this couch and get rid of that shadow right in there. I'm going to come up in here and now I'm going to put in a little fur for my cat. In this part is darker. Okay. This part is darker, even though my cat's name is blue. And I'm going to add a little um, tortillion here in a minute. If you don't have a tortillion, I'm going to give you some more advice. Because that's what I do, is give advice to you. I'm coming up in here. Okay. And... Maybe then I'm going to put a little bit right in there. I may have to take that out. I'll show you how to take that out in a little bit. Because when I put it in, I immediately went, oh, that's going to be where the whiskers go. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Now I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to get inside his ear. He's got some darker ears. I'm going to give him some of this stuff right in there. Giving him a little bit of hair up in here. Couple it right in here too. If you make that sound, you get extra points. You don't. There are no extra points today. You just make it look better. Okay, maybe he's sort of peeking at me. He's going, What are you doing, lady? Why are you bugging me when I'm trying to nap? Why? 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 Because you're so cute. I would play music. Play some music. I'm, I'm kind of happy with my little outlining-ish of my cat right here. So now I'm going to grab my tortillion. If you don't have a tortillion, remember a tortillion is just a round up, rolled up piece of um, paper. Okay, round rolled up piece of paper. You could use a Q-tip, but what you don't want to use is your finger. Let me tell you why you don't want to use your finger. You have oil on your finger. I don't care. I know you're washing your hands. I know that. But you have oil on your fingers, and when that oil plus your graphite from your pencil mixed together, it makes, a, it, makes it slick. Yeah, it makes it shiny. That's called burnishing, another word we'll use here shortly. But what you need to do is not use that. You can't erase it. You can't erase it. I haven't used an eraser yet, but what I am going to do now is come into my cat, and I've got my little tortillion, and I'm going to give him a little bit of fur. I'm going to give him a little bit of fur. I'm going to give him a little bit of where he doesn't have the same texture as my couch. I don't want to give my cat, and by the way, he's got, he has front legs. He's got them up underneath him. I don't know if you don't have a cat, you don't know this, but these, these guys, they sleep. They can look like they have no arms or legs. <laughs> Blue sleeps on my head every night. I have a cat hat for bed when I go to bed. He sleeps on my head every night. And um, if I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or something, he gets on my pillow. He's such a toot. 
Can I say that? Sure, I can. All right, so I'm shading in my blue cat. He's hilarious. Can't show him to you because I'm using my phone, but he is on my phone. I'll try to post a picture in the comments when I'm done. By the way, this is going to go to my, I believe, going to go to my website so that you can look at it again later. Or maybe try it again because a lot of times that's what you need to do when you are drawing is you do it one time and then you do it again. How do you get better with just about anything? You do it again. Right in here, do you see that? I'm going to make that really nice and dark. I'm going to go back and put that in. Once you get your first layer on, which was that sketching, then you put in that tortillion, your smudger. Some people call it smudger. Then you're going to come out here. You're going to come back and put in some more of your details. You're going to go back in here. I don't want my cat and my couch to be the same texture. I want the texture. This is that, <laughs> all I can think of is Herculon. My mom used to say, oh, he went Herculon on our couch. I don't know what that meant back then, but she would say it. And so I would get Herculon couch. Anybody laughing? You should. Herculon is funny. Herculon. Oh, okay. So here, I'm a little concerned that I may take that out, but some part of me just now just went, no, nah, just do it. Go ahead, get in there and get dark. And so I am. I'm going to get in there and get dark and get that Herculon on the couch. Get him all the way up to the edge of his Herculon. He is Herculon out here. Okay, he's Herculon out. Look how I have almost got rid of all of the lines of my cat that I originally drew. That's the point. You want to try to get rid of those lines so your cat comes towards you. Do you see how he's doing that? Now I'm going to come back and I'm adding details. I add those details to him right in there. Now, look how I'm being able to make his tail a little longer because it actually does. It doesn't probably connect to right about there. So I'm just putting in a darker shadow in there. That cat, he's pretty cute. I'm doing a good job. You know what? You need to say that to yourself once in a while, friends. Don't beat yourself up. Don't say, that's not right. Um, lift. Be a lifter. Don't be a, don't lean down. Say it's okay. It really is okay to say that your work is not bad. Some people think that that's not true, but I will just tell you. Be happy about it. One ear is bigger than the other ear. Here's how I'm going to solve that problem. I'm going to move this ear a little bit like that. And then when I come up here with this ear, I can come up in here. I can use something called an eraser. Now, you may have a needed eraser, and you may not. You may have just a regular old everyday eraser. Unless you're like me and you have no erasers at all anywhere close by. Oh, here they are. A needed eraser is an eraser that is looks a whole lot like Silly Putty. It's not Silly Putty. If you are fortunate enough to get um, to have one of these, it's like this, and you pull it apart, pull it apart, and that's how you clean your eraser. This is an old one, but it's new. I mean, it's been in the drawer a long time. They last a long time, and they're amazing stress reducers, but I pulled some off. Now, I could lighten it up by just pressing down and then picking up and look how much lighter that got see how it went all to my eraser the ear print is even in there it acts like silly putty so i can make that ear a little bit bigger if i wanted to where's my number two 
Oh, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. So I can make that ear a little bigger. And then I can go back in behind it and smooth that out again. And so now the ears are a little more even. When I do it my second time, that's something I probably would pay attention to. I could lighten up this part and make him a little smaller. Probably not. It's not going to happen today. That's all right. That's all right. This side of his face maybe is a little darker right in here. Remember I said that tortillion, use that tortillion because see, it's, the cat's starting to look a whole lot like, there we go, much better. He's starting to look a whole lot like the couch. I don't want him to look like Herculon. Okay. And he's sleeping. Your cat ever sleep with his head upside down? Mine does, he's hilarious. All right, so I've got this part kind of in there. I can uh, use the H. Remember that HB? I can get in there with that HB and make his little eyes. I can give him... Blue has eyebrows. And he's got whiskers. He's got the best little dots on his face. Check your... Check your animal out and see. If you don't have an animal, look at that picture. And then, let's draw them out there. See where those little sharp, 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 sharp? He's pretty cute, huh? I like it. So, I've sharpened those out. Blue also has, um, there's something to that when they say cat eyes. He does. He has cat eyes. He's got that little nose. I'm going to give him those nostril holes right down in here. I can come back with this shorter. If your cat is long hair, then we're going to draw long hair. I'm going to give Blue a little long hair right in there. Just He doesn't really have it. But I want you to see. Hey, I've enjoyed drawing with you today. Draw again. Draw again. Draw again. That's how you get better at this. You just keep drawing. You just don't give up. I'm going to put my name here. And I'm going to put the year. And I'm going to come back every once in a while and look at this piece. Because this is going to inspire me. Either my work's going to get better. Or on occasion, it will get worse. And you say, hey. I can't draw a blah, 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 but I can draw a cat. And so you'll find your voice in your art. You'll find your voice. You'll find what you like to do. What did I tell you I was going to do at the very end? I have no idea. Needed eraser. What to do at the end. I can't remember. Well, it'll come back to me, and we'll visit again. Draw again. Draw some something. Um, maybe your shoe. You're trying to think, what can I draw? You can draw a shoe. You can draw a soda bottle. You can look. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to go get you a uh, Norman Rockwell calendar to look at to see how he kind of put everything out there like that. So you draw a minute, count to like 20, and see how long it takes me to get back. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three, four, five, six, Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ta-da! Long time ago, someone gave me these. They are Norman Rockwell State Farm 2014 calendars. I love to use these things. 
Look, here he is working, and see how he has all of his stuff around him as he's drawing and he's working. You don't have to not do things that just comes out of your brain and, and falls into your hand. You can, but use these things. Look at Norman Rockwell. Here he's got, he's drawn a little boy looking at his sister's diary. That's cute. Let's see what else we've got. Here is April Fool's. That one is fun. I'm going to put that one up. Y'all hold it if you do this, and then you see if you can find all the craziness. Oh, that glare. Get off glare. There it is. Now, click your little button and hold it and look at all the different things. Kind of reminds me of a surreal picture. A surreal picture. Ah, I think it was Ashley. Ashley Pearson. I think it was the Norman Rockwell calendar. I think that's what I was going to show you is how you put all of your stuff around it. He's pretty cool. Look him up. He is a, called an Americana. There's the girl writing. He is kind of a combination drawing and painting person. He does the life. The life what's happening in life, drawing from life. Maybe you should draw what's happening in your life right now. That would be a great one. Um, what is happening? What is changing? Can you draw someone in your house doing something that has changed since we've all been in this uh, state of quarantine? I think that would be cool. I had a great time drawing with you with this. We'll draw again. I don't know what we'll draw. You could send me some messages and I'll get some ideas from you. I like the surrealist idea, so I'm going to kind of follow through with that probably. Maybe with some hands and surrealism. And 512-635-5555. Um, six three five seven nine three six text me and i will get some ideas out be sure in the comments you uh, post what you did so that i can enjoy it too i'm so happy to see all of you it's great to see all of you and i hope you can see my miss frizzle dress i hope to talk to you soon y'all have a great day